Hi, third, fourth, and fifth grade leaders. We're preparing for November 17th in our series called Direct Message. In this series, we've been taking a look at the prophets. And the prophets um, were over hundreds of years. Before Jesus was born, the prophets were sent by God, um, raised up within the Israelite people to um, point them back to God. What would happen is years would go by, 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 70s of years would go by and people would follow God, but then along the way they would add things to it, take things away, and they would forget that God was the one true God, and then all of a sudden there's a generation that is not following God anymore. So God would raise up these prophets to, to be a reminder to his people. The prophet we look at today is Habakkuk, and Habakkuk has his own um, book of the Bible. And I think that we can be encouraged by the story of Habakkuk um, and what he experienced, because I think many of us experience this. I know kids, especially the ages of the kids that you're leading small groups for, are beginning to see this, especially like our fifth graders going into sixth graders. They begin to question this in the big ways. And then if they've had some major things happen in their family, they may start to question that in a, a little earlier. But what they are asking is, if there's a good, if God is so good, why do bad things happen? And I think Habakkuk sees this and is a perfect way for us to frame that for a kid and to point them toward um, God's design in bad things happening. He doesn't desire for, for everyone to perish before they have the opportunity to know that God is the one true God. And so sometimes me especially, need trials to go through so that we remember to put God as our number one. And so what Habakkuk, Habakkuk lived at a time when evil seemed to be everywhere. And what we can be encouraged by is that it is completely normal to see evil in the world and for us to feel a deep sadness. At the same time, we can also still have faith in God. Um, when Habakkuk asked God to stop this evil, God tells him that that wasn't his plan. And, and Habakkuk doesn't understand why God would tell him that um, he wants evil to continue. But remember, God's plan is so much bigger, hundreds of years bigger than any of us can fathom. And so we're probably not going to be a lot around long enough to understand the bigger scope of what God's doing in some bad situations. But we still have a good God who wants everybody to have the chance to believe that Jesus is their Savior. And so what we see Habakkuk do should be how we direct our kids to respond in such a situation. Habakkuk says, I want to read his words exactly. He says, um, even if the... Even if the trees and vines do not produce fruit, even if nothing grows in the fields, and even if there is no sheep in the pens and no cattle in the barns, I will be glad because of the Lord. I will rejoice in God who saves. God, I'm going to believe in you even if everything around me is, is falling apart. God, I'm going to believe that your plan to rescue us from Jesus with Jesus is is true and that that message is for everybody. And so while I don't understand the circumstances that I'm living in right now, God, I'm going to trust in you. And so we learn about the weight in this story and we can look forward to Jesus coming back to make everything right again. Now your small groups activities. Um, you have your social activity where you're playing who's the boss. Remember, you have two different people that are going to be designated from your group. You have it and the boss, and it is going to leave the group while you tell everybody else who the boss is. And when the boss um, does something, everybody else is going to do it while it 
when it comes back, it is going to try to figure out who the boss was, and you can play this back and forth for a little while until we're ready to start large group. There is no correlation between this activity and anything that we're learning from the Bible. Don't even try to stretch that because there's not. It is just a fun game to for you to play. And I like these kind of games because you don't need anything to do it. So if, there, if your group learns to play this game and you have fun with this game, you can always pull this out later um, when we're not doing this game to fill some time or to build some relationships with kids if you feel this is working with you, you and your group. Then your large, then your small group activity, you have a bag full of sticky notes and a poster. And what you're going to do with your poster first off is you're going to write on your poster questions from you. And you can draw question marks on here if you want to or just put questions from you because the kids are going to fill it up with sticky notes. And what you're going to do is give each kid two to three sticky notes. If some kids want more, they can have more. And encourage them to write some questions on their sticky notes of things that they've never understood about God or about the Bible or about Jesus or um, any of those things. And um, then the one question per sticky note. And then as they've filled them out, they can come put them on the board. And after um, you're done with that activity, you guys can look at that board together and see if there's some ways that you as a small group can help answer some of those questions. Maybe some of those questions are easy to answer. Maybe some of them are not so easy to answer. And you're going to need some time to study God's word to help direct them towards the answer or talk to me or another leader. Um, about how you can answer those questions. Remember, we don't have to answer every question for kids. Um, we can learn from Habakkuk that there's maybe not an answer to some things. Um, but where we can, we want to direct kids towards scripture and how God answers that in his word. Then if you have time after that's done, flip your poster board over. And at the top, on the other side, you're going to write thankful and give the kids some more sticky notes and ask them to write things that they are thankful for. Now, it's important for us to do both parts of this. First off, to understand um, questions that kids have, but second, um, to realize that when there are times where we don't understand um, what God is doing among us, we can look at all of the things he's already done and see his goodness because we have acknowledged the things that he's already done. So writing things that we are thankful for helps us acknowledge that God helped in this situation. So we know he's going to help again. And um, one day, maybe we'll get to see the answer to that as well. So I hope that you're able to get to both of those activities. If you need to not do your memory verse activity this week so that you can get both of those in, that would be great for you. Or maybe you want to send um, some sticky notes home with the kids and ask them to write things that they are thankful for once they get home. Your memory verse activity, you have your dice and your fill in the blanks. Kids are going to roll the dice to fill in the blanks with the memory verse as they um, are beginning to learn this memory verse. One of the words that sticks out to me this week is slowness. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Understanding that waiting on God for the Israelites in this time period were hundreds of years, seven, eight hundred years before Jesus was born. That's not even Jesus dying on the cross yet, so he hasn't rescued them from their sins yet. He was just going to be born. So hundreds of years before the Israelites saw that. So slowness may not be in our lifetime, may not be in our lifetime that we get to see God's answer to some of the things around us. But we can trust in a big God anyway. And he desires for everyone to know that his son, Jesus, came to rescue us from the sins, um, our personal sins. All right. And then you can pray with your kids and hang out with them until small group, until their parents are ready to come pick them up.
thank you so much for leading. I hope at Parkway Victoria that you're planning to join us this evening for our um, leader Thanksgiving party. I can't wait to taste your dish that you brought to share with everyone. I'll see you guys again soon.